Hi everybody, this is Danny from CS Design. Um, welcome to part three of our uh, for rent pro forma discussion. In this video, we're going to be talking about the income and expenses tab. If you haven't watched uh, part one and part two, you can find links to that to those two videos down in the notes. Um, but let's just jump right into this uh, third part here. The income and expenses tab is probably one of the easiest tabs to fill out on the entire pro forma. It's essentially just writing in um, the revenue that you expect to make on your on your property and your units, and then what your expenses are going to be for the year. The key is what we're going to be coming out with at the end, which is your operating expenses ratio, uh, and we'll get to that. So, uh, if you open up the uh, pro forma. <clears throat> Remember that the items that are in blue are those items that you should be changing. The items that are uh, in black are items that are fixed or being calculated. Um, and so for this example, I've just created a couple of unit types, let's say studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and a office space, maybe some commercial space that you have down on, on a lower floor. I've put in some unit sizes, some open space, um, some quantities, you know, two studios, two bedrooms. And these numbers, by the way, also get populated um, back into the project summary. So um, when you look at your um, unit count, this number seven, uh, you know, seven units is coming from over here, uh, it's get, which is basically getting added up. So um, these numbers are all being pulled elsewhere. Um, you know, this is giving you your uh, average unit size, so 700 square feet in this particular case. Um, the next thing that you're going to be adding here is basically the amount of rent um, per month per unit. The only difference is the way I did it in this pro forma is the office space I'm doing it is the dollar per square foot um, and then the total uh, rent for the unit um, is being calculated and I'm not getting into net, triple net or any of that stuff. This is just a, a simple example of renting out your office space at three dollars a square foot. Um, and what happens at, at the right over here is that you get your um, projected gross revenue income, this PGRI. Um, there's a little uh, explanation of the, of the acronyms down here at the bottom in case you're interested. But uh, for example, these studio units, they're going to be pulling in $42,000 a year. And this is basically taking two units, um, each of which is getting $17.50 a month for uh, 12 months. And that's going to give you your uh, revenue for those type of units in 12 months. What you end up here with is a total uh, gross income of $193,200 for the example of this project. So put that to the side for a second. Now you know how much money you're going to make. Now we'll talk about how much money you're going to spend in order to keep this um, uh, uh, building around and, and, and leased up. And you're going to have all kinds of different costs and you can break this up however you want, as detailed as you want, as general as you want, um, it's really up to you. I've broken it down into three categories, administrative, excuse me, four categories, administrative, maintenance, operating costs, and taxes and insurance. Um, the administrative costs are things like marketing, management, legal costs, your accountant, you know, office supplies, what, whatever, whatever um, you think you're gonna be spending, to maintain, you know, credit checks every time you, you know, somebody else moves in, you're gonna have to run some credit checks, and these numbers are being calculated and are being entered on an annual basis. So you're spending two thousand dollars a year, let's say, on advertising and marketing, seventy-seven hundred for uh, your management fee, which, which by the way, is um, um, you can either do it as a percentage or you can just put in um, uh, a number. Um, so just change this depending on how you you you, you want to do it. It's in blue right now. It's being calculated, but I have it in blue just so that you know. You can either just put in that number or do it as a percentage of your um, income. Um, next category is the maintenance category. These are just basically things that you're going to need to just maintain your building and make sure that it's uh, you know up to speed and, and doing well. Um, if it's a newer building, these numbers might be lower. If it's an older building, these numbers might be higher. And you may have more categories here. You may have more things that you, you know, you're gonna have to put in that are unique to your specific project, your specific building. Um, but again, just for the sake of this example, I just threw in a couple here, you know, 7,700 bucks a year. Then these are some operating costs for the building. Let's say you have a house meter that powers, you know, exterior lights or, you know, powers, a, a, you know, a garage door or, or whatever it is that you have 
um, water, trash, a handyman, you know, an exterminator once a year, you know, whatever, whatever you want to put here as the operating cost for the building. It don't necessarily fall into the maintenance thing. Um, and so that comes out to, let's say, eighty-seven fifty per year. And then you have your taxes and insurance. And taxes obviously will depend on where, where you live and the project and how it's calculated. In this particular case, um, just based on the land value um, or the, you know, the land price that we paid. Remember, this is going back over here. This was the land cost of $750,000. So you're going to be paying your uh, property taxes on that um, at a rate of 1.25. That's typical here in L.A., um, so that comes out to that number there. You've got an insurance cost basically to um, make sure that you have um, liability insurance for your building, slip and fall, that kind of thing. And you come up with a total taxes and insurance number. And when you add all these up, when you add up these four categories, the way at least I've broken it down, you come up to a little over $48,000. And when you look at that in relation to your uh, net your gross income, which was this amount here, the 193,000. You subtract the 48,000, and you have what's called your NOI, your net operating income. In this particular case, it's 145,147 dollars. So this is what you're going to make every year after you've paid all of your expenses. Now, don't forget, you will be paying your debt service out of here. So this isn't necessarily your profit for the year, but this is what you're left after you've taken out your expenses. The number that I talked about at the very beginning, the operating expenses ratio, is a very important number. This essentially tells you, as a percentage of your revenue, how much does it cost you to maintain and run your building. 25% um, is a good industry standard. If you can get this number lower, it means you may be running your, your building uh, more efficiently. Um, or, you know, the, the ratio may be lower because you're, you're making a lot of uh, income. You know, you, you, you've got, you know, I don't know, some knockout property in a great location. And so even though you're, you're spending typical expenses, you're making a lot more on the, on the front end. Um, banks will look at this operating expenses ratio, which, by the way, they will be asking you for an income and expenses sheet if you're getting uh, any kind of permanent loan or takeout loan. Um, they will be looking at your operating expenses ratio and they're going to be looking at it to be somewhere between 25 and 30 percent any higher than that and they're going to wonder if you're running your building efficiently any lower than that it could also raise some eyebrows that you may be trying to um, you know deflate your numbers in order to look like your building is much more efficient than it really is um, so when it comes to putting in these numbers it's it's like the the, the rest of the pro forma it's garbage in garbage out um, so you want to try to get these numbers as best as you can. Sometimes you can get these numbers from the previous owner. Um, you know, if you know property uh, owners who have um, similar type of holdings, you can ask them. Taxes and, you know, that sort of thing is easy to figure out. Um, but you want to try to get a good number and you want to try to be anywhere in that 25 to 30% range. Um, and, I mean, that's it. That's It's a pretty simple tab uh, in, in the overall pro forma and um, should be relatively easy and self-explanatory. Um, but um, that's it. So um, in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about the cost estimating tab and how you um, come up with the cost for um, the project, whether it's new or, or a renovation. All right, so join me then.